Um, Benny Harding is a young, artistic, fun, bold, I said artistic, um, I'm bold, definitely outspoken sometimes, aggressive, um, someone who stands up for what she believes in, like if something's going down and I see it happening, I'm not going to stand by, I'm going to chime in and be like, no, you need to go this way or that's not right. Um, I'm out, I, did I say outgoing? I'm outgoing. <laughs> because this is such a hard question for me because it's kind of hard for me to put myself in a box to say what I really am because I wake up and I feel like a totally different person sometimes. Like you might see me today with blue hair or purple hair and I might wake up and I might want red. Or I might wake up and I might not want no hair. So it just, just, yeah, spontaneous. <laughs> what was played by my father was a little bit of Temptations, Osley Brothers, Anita Baker, um, Marvin Gaye, Al Green. But when he wasn't around, oh, you best believe we had that DMX on. The whole Rough Riders on, State Property, Dipset, little bit of Shanti, like, you name it. Like, if we could get our hands on it, that's what we listen to. Growing up, I was going through a lot of things, and it was kind of hard for me to express myself because I was the youngest child. Nobody really took me serious. So I, write, I started writing my thoughts down and making rhymes out of it. And it kind of triggered when you know when we, back in the day they give you like the little single and then they got like the instrumental in the, in the, at the end of it it might be the single the remix instrumental me and my brother we had the karaoke machine and we'll play the instrumental on repeat and we'll sit there have a writing session and they would look at me like oh she just writing chicken scratch whole time <laughs> i had a whole like rap persona i had i was creating and as time progressed and i started going through more and more i just would write it down a couple months ago, it like dawned on me that it really wasn't much music with substance anymore. Like, I'm all for the whole pop thing or everybody making songs that's gonna make people dance, but music is very important. And a lot of the things that I've went through, music helped me. And there's really not much for young women, young females growing up to listen to that could put them on the right path or take them where they need to go. Everything is about be this and hold that. And it's like, yo, we are women. You're a young lady. You know, walk with your chin, your chin and your nose held high. Make these guys respect you. And that's what I want to exude through my music. My love for hip hop. It's really deep. Like, it didn't dawn on me until probably a couple months ago. I was just sitting down thinking of, like, you know, everything I've been through. And growing up, we would go to my grandparents' house in Philly. And it's a street in Philly called 52nd Street. And they would sell, like, oils and Texas socks, incense. And they had bootlegs or the hottest mixtapes. Like, if it was, like, DJ Clue, we had mad DJ Clue. Um, that's where, I like, I first heard it. And it just gave me a feeling that nothing else, like, nothing else could give me that feeling that hip-hop gave me. Like, I could listen to R&B, but soon as something about hearing these rappers talk about their lives and they're comfortable to talk about their struggle, it made me not be so ashamed of who I am and the things I've been through and, you know, the lives I've lost and the crazy stuff I've done. It made me, like, kind of proud. Like, if they could talk about it, why can't I? You know what I mean? What inspires me? Anger inspires me to write. <laughs> um, love inspires me to write. Um, just... It'll be the most random thing. Like, I might have a line in my head from somebody else's song, and it might trigger an emotion in me, I, whatever it is, anger, hurt, happiness. And I'll be like, I want to write a song about this specific topic. Um, I like oldies, like the 70s, 60s. Um, 
I listen to like pretty much every and anything, but mainly R and B. R and B is another thing I sing to. Not many people know that, but I do sing. So when I am, I actually allowing my guard to be let down. I sing, but I haven't gotten there yet with my my craft. <laughs> My experience in Jersey plays a major part in what what I'm doing now because when I was in Jersey, that's when I was like a totally different person. I was like this rugged, like tomboyish girl. Like I ran the streets. I ain't care about nobody feelings. Like I would say whatever, do whatever. I didn't listen to nobody. You couldn't tell me nothing at all. And then when I moved to Baltimore, I was stripped away from everything that made me who I am or who I thought I was. And that's when I realized like, okay, you done did all of that. So now what? And moving to Baltimore kind of gave me a fresh start to figure out who I really am. And I had job, I had a few jobs since I moved here, but none of it made me happy. And what I realized made me happy, which is where I kind of stopped at when I was living in Jersey was music. So it took me a little while, but you know, I was able to get back to my music by moving here. Doing a little bit of acting. I just recently um, got a movie role. Um, yeah, just acting right now. And I'm a massage therapist. <laughs> I have a massage business. They, the things that stand out to me the most aren't really necessarily good things, but they are things that I learned from. Like my father, he passed away in um, August 2011. A couple months later, my sister, she passed away like three days before my birthday, which was last Friday. She It would make a, um, three years since she passed away, and my birthday was this previous Monday. Those That, that happening really like changed me because they were the two people that made sure I got my stuff done. Like if I had to go to a job interview or if I had to go to the doctor or, or anything like that, they called me and they checked up on me and made sure I did it. Once they were gone, it was like a reality check. Like ain't nobody here to call you and tell you to do this. Ain't nobody here to call you and tell you don't do that. Like, so everything that I'm doing right now it's like I gotta figure it out. I don't have no. I really don't have nobody to call to to ask for advice that I really can trust and confide in that really knows me. Like those were the only two people who knew me. So that happening a couple years ago, it really made everything kind of come into perspective the way my life was about to go. I could just say that it's going to be classic, and that's what's taking me so long because. I come up with a new idea literally like every day and I'm very indecisive and I want to make sure that it really reflects who I am as an artist and you know I do a lot of covers and stuff like that for fun but in real life I'd rather make my own music and I just want to make sure that I put out the right message when I do it. I don't want to because once that music is out there you can't take it back like they've already heard it. Whatever you think you said that you think you're going to get away with, they already heard it. You can't take it back. You can apologize, but, you know, yeah.